the problem of pain and evil in the world, both human evil and natural evil, has been used by atheists really over and over again. They'll put up a, a bunch of series of situations, you know, childhood leukemia, victims of a tsunami, whatever, whether it's human evil or maybe somebody got raped, maybe somebody got murdered, and they will say, you see, this shows that God is not just, or he's not powerful, or he's not real, because he lets this go on. Blaming, putting the blame on God for whether, whether it's human evil or natural evil. And I want to try to deal with those as briefly as I can so that, folk, you can use this video as an asset when, when they put up those memes, because they vary the, the detail that they complain about, but the theme is the same. That because God hasn't done anything about this, he's either not real or he's not good. And that's that's the recurring theme, and I want to deal with it in five minutes because the church really hasn't dealt with it as well as they could have, and part of the reason, I think, is because they misunderstand initial conditions. It, it isn't that there was a perfect world until Adam took the fruit and fell. This life was always the test. It was always it was designed to be the test. And we were supposed to, in communion with God, overcome the unruliness of a natural world that does not have to do God's will. It wants to, it struggles with it, but it is a flawed world. It is an unruly world. So let's start with how Christianity looks at evil differently than other religions or even secularists. One, Hinduism and Buddhism, they say, well, pain is inevitable, and so the goal should be to be at detached from pain get to where you don't care if you're in pain or if you see pain and that that isn't right that's not what how christianity says to deal with pain christianity says mourn with those who mourn comfort people christ came and he shared in our suffering he was god but he came down not only did he have a regular life like ours it was like a worse life he was not richer than us and he was not more respected than us by all the beautiful people running things. He he suffered. He suffered more than most of us suffer. And so Christianity has a different view, even than, except for the most extreme forms of Calvinism, even than Islam. Islam has this idea that God is super in control and everything. If something bad happens to somebody, well, that was just God doing his will on them. And so don't get too upset about it. It was it was his time or it was her time. And, and none of these are the way Christianity says that we should deal with evil. Christianity says we should act like it's something unnatural. We should think it's wrong because it is wrong. This world is out of sorts. This world is a place where the creatures in it and the cosmos itself do not have to do God's will every moment of time. That is necessary for us to have free choice. And so we, we have a creation that God is subjected to futility in, in hope that it won't always stay there, in hope of a better world. And that's the other part of this that needs to be said. What could justify all the pain and the suffering that has gone on throughout human history and before human history, even if you're thinking of animals? God promises us that the suffering of this present time isn't worthy to be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed, that this is a temporal state. It, the pain is real. The pain is bad. We should not do like the Hindus and the Buddhists and try to say it's all an illusion, try to get detached from it. No, that's wrong. We should suffer with people who are suffering. We should mourn with those who mourn. We should comfort them when we can. But it is temporary. And God is going to replace it once he imposes his will. He is going to replace it with a world that is permanent. And that suffering, that, that pain is taken away. And there's always comfort. And so that, that is one aspect of the situation. God is going to replace this world with a better one where his will is done, where this, this freedom, we will freely choose him. So we will still have freedom. But all those who will not freely choose him are consigned to the abyss. And disobedience is confined right there so we can have a world that works 
like it is supposed to. Now, let me deal. That doesn't change the fact that the pain we're experiencing now is real. It is significant. The suffering matters. If, it, if the suffering in this life didn't matter, then the suffering of Christ dying for our sins and being humiliated wouldn't matter either. But it, God thinks it does matter. That's how our sins were paid for, by his son going through suffering in this temporal world. So yes, it matters, even if it's not permanent. Now let's address, uh, we, we'll address two issues. One, the problem of human evil and the argument against that. And two, the problem of natural evil, that is, disasters that take place within nature. So one kind of evil the atheists want to blame on God is, is human evil. The evil that we do to each other. They would say, for example, if I were God, I would not have let Hitler send six million Jews to the ovens. Or if I were God and a priest molested a child, I would stop him from doing that. Therefore, I'm more moral than God. By God, by letting this thing go and settling the books at the end, that doesn't appeal to them. They're saying God should intervene now. He should stop it now. Why doesn't he stop it now? And that, that's what they say with many specific examples. But when they say this, folks, they don't mean that God should stop them from doing the things that he thinks are evil. They mean that God should stop others from doing things that they think are evil. You see, were God to inhibit their actions in any way, I will tell you what they will do. They would be among the first to shake their fists at him and declare him a tyrant and also say he is unjust because he has one standard for what is good and evil and they have another and they think they're right. They don't think see some of their actions as evil and he does. In fact, there are billions of us and we may all have slightly different ideas of what good and evil are. or Maybe we have very different ideas among seven or eight billion people, what evil is. And in their solution for this cacophony of choices bumping up against each other, they all want God to do it their way. So whatever happens, they mock God. If he does not intervene to stop human evil from humans, do, one human doing bad things to another, if he doesn't intervene, they mock him and say he either doesn't exist or he's not powerful or he's not good. If he did intervene, they would mock him as a tyrant and declare his actions unjust on the basis of they have a different idea of what ought to happen. How do you know that, Mark? You're accusing of that. How do you know that? Well, just look at the way they react when God doesn't impose his will, but through his people, through the church, he declares something good or evil. They can't stand it. They come against it. They revile it. They deny it. They shake their fist and say, you're trying to impose your morality on me, especially if some church or some Christian body suggests that the government should make a law concerning this thing. Then we're not a theocracy. And so on the one hand, they're blaming God for not coming in and imposing his standards where they feel they should be imposed. And on the other hand, if any of God's people try it, oh, we, we're not a theocracy here. Now, I myself am very libertarian and have real doubts about the ability of human government to make people better. So I'm not saying that we should uh, try to make pass a law saying people have to love Jesus and go to church on Sunday because the law can't do that. But maybe we could stop, have a law stopping us from killing one another. But the point is, they turn the problem up. They twist the problem in their heads so that no matter what happens, God is to be mocked. Is that because God is intrinsically, uh, is, that, is that God is worthy of being mocked? No, it's because that's who they are. It's because that's what they are. And that's who they want to be. The real problem they have with the existence of God is that they are not him. Nothing has changed since the Garden of Eden. We all want to sit in the big chair. 
And when God doesn't run things the way we think he ought to, we declare him evil, not us. Atheists complain about natural evil. That is, that the creation itself hurts people and does bad things to people. Children get leukemia and go through great suffering. Tsunamis wipe out entire villages. And atheists say the same thing. They say, look, it, either God doesn't care to stop this, or he's not powerful enough to stop this, or he doesn't exist. And so therefore, I'm better than he is. And that that is, the, again, there's the idea that we have an existence here, and at the end of it, he's going to comfort everything is not enough. They want to know why he doesn't stop it now. Now, what they mean when they say this is that God should have made a universe where man can do whatever he pleases. He can be as lustful, as hurtful, as sinful, or destructive as he wishes while he exists in a nature that behaves itself perfectly. That's what they're saying. Now, there's no reason why God should do that. If a man wishes to be unruly, then it is only fitting that he live in a natural realm that is unruly. He should get from nature what he puts into it. I think it would ruin the idea of a creation that is a test if no matter how awful we were, the world kept enabling us and healing around it. Now, if you go back in Genesis chapter 1 and look at the original commission of God to man, it was to dominate and subdue the natural world. Now, that implies, and look up those words in Hebrew. They're, they're very harsh. Tread down, dominate, impose your will on it, conquer. The, the original state of nature was unruly. And I know that there are some Christians who do not believe that, mostly because they've adopted teachings of the rabbis uh, into the church, and it's, they're incorrect. The rabbis, Christ and his apostles are the Jews we need to listen to. They, they, they've got it right. And Genesis describes a natural world that starts off dark. It starts off lifeless. It starts off without order and form. And God's word goes into that creation and makes it better. And at the end, he creates man, and he tells man, now you finish the job. I'm commissioning you. I'm putting you in charge. Finish the job. We haven't finished the job. We were supposed to take that nature and do what God was doing. And in communion with him, make it better. Bring it into bondage. Bring it into submission. And to some extent, even though man has not listened to God, our relationship with God has been very iffy, we have still, in, in a big way, fulfilled that commission. We have found ways to moderate the impact of natural evil quite a bit. But it is my opinion that what was really holding up the show is that we did not do it in communion with God very well. We didn't listen to him very well. And that if we had listened to him all this time, we would have found a cure for childhood leukemia thousands of years ago. We, we would have found ways to detect earthquakes and tsunamis thousand years ago. Our, our science would be better. Our economy would be better. We have wasted so much energy, so much resources on sin and disobedience, on war and ripping each other off and deceiving each other and uh, intoxication, getting high, and illicit sex that causes pain. We put so much pain on each other that we're too distracted to do what we should have about natural evil. And that's the truth. G.K. Chesterton, the great English mind, they, they asked him and several other great minds to answer the question, and newspapers did, what is the problem with the world today? He had a two-word answer, I am. He understood this. He understood the human evil is holding up the show for natural evil. And that's what Romans chapter 8, I believe it is, is teaches as well. The creation is subjected to futility, but it's in hope. In hope that what? That man will get his act together 
and walk in communion with God like he's supposed to. Instead, we're doing the opposite. The atheists here are doing the opposite. They're trying to get further from God. That is not going to fix it. That is not going to help man to achieve his goal of getting on top of natural evil and, and taming the world. The atheists would blame God for all these things, but this should just remind us that narcissists never take responsibility for their actions, and they always seek to deflect blame. They are wrong to do that. Thank you so much for listening, and may God bless you.